What was that? Oh, fuck! Daniel, special time of year. What are we looking at? We're looking at <laughs> Firecracker Weekend was what I was gonna say. This <laughs> is the 4th of July. This 4th of July yeah. weekend. Uh, 4th of July, this is America. Yeah, and bombs. Think, and it's hot. Yeah. Right? And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking Whiskey democracy. Ice. Democracy. So, we're gonna do uh, an American cocktail, the old fashioned. We had it to vote. We asked the whiskey tribe, mm. what are the whiskeys that you're putting in your old fashioned? Yeah, because the old fashioned is like my go to if I'm at a place and I have to have a cocktail instead of a whiskey. Yes. Always get an old fashioned. It's easy. Ingredients are simple. Yeah. They can't water it down that much yeah. without really fucking it up. Yeah, 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 so it's, yeah, it's easy to catch them if they're watering it down. So let's like try this blind. I don't yeah. want to be because we did like an old fashioned episode a long, one of the earliest episodes. We just picked some whiskeys we thought were cool. We picked some ones we thought would be good. Now we have this massive community that we know have some really interesting opinions when it comes to old fashions. But so now we also have our own bourbon. All right, so let's go figure out the recipe that we're using with Richard, and then right. we'll blind taste a bunch of stuff. Because America, and we get paid to drink for some weird reason. <laughs> because America. Because America. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay, Richard, you're gonna show us how to do a version of the old fashioned. Yeah, this is the most controversial cocktail in bartending. Oh, is what? it? What? Yes. Why is this? What? Because you've been, you know, in restaurant, food service, bartending for 35 years. Right. Why is this controversial? Because the cocktail has evolved over time. The cocktail is supposed to be made in the old-fashioned way, which was a way of rectifying poor spirits. Oh. Mm, so, so a little bit of sugar makes the medicine go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of sugar makes your whiskey go down. This is like the barbecue of cocktails, because barbecue ah. originated yeah. to fix stuff that was not good. Yeah. And now it's become like a pretty mainstay cornerstone of, yeah. So we're going to do the muddling, and we're going to add some fruit in, the fruit in or fruit outside is one of the controversies. Mm. Do you muddle fruit in or fruit outside? And orange wedge also, a slice of orange is very controversial. Yeah. I have eliminated that one. Oh. Oh. The controversy. Okay. So no matter what happens, we are heathen dogs. Yeah, look at the comments. It's gonna be, <laughs> that's totally wrong. All right. Yeah. <laughs> what do we need? What are the ingredients? What's the process? We're gonna do the sugar cube. Okay. Which is another one a lot of people don't like to sugar cube because the sweetness varies as you're drinking it. So your sugar cube, your cherry, Angostura bitters, three dashes, three dashes right on the cube. A nice muddler for muddling. We're gonna mash that in. You can also add at this point a little bit of water to help in the muddling. And then we're gonna put in our Eleanor whiskey. The other thing is, is what size ice, what kind of ice are you going to use? We've been using... Oh, nice. Large ice here. Slower yep. melting. I like that. I think I prefer that. And a little bit of a stir. A nice little garnish. Oh, nice. So our starter, Old Fashioned. I'll take an Old Fashioned barking. There you go. Cheers, <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to y'all. Okay, so this is the just the baseline cocktail that he made with Eleanor, which is a sourced bourbon that we aged a little bit longer here in Texas, just so we can have something going through the bar while we're making and aging our own stuff. Baseline, and we're gonna compare all the other whiskeys that the people voted on. Yeah, you know, we'll compare it to this, and then we're gonna arrange the ones that are coming from most to least favorite. Yeah. This one doesn't get included because it's not fair. We know what it is. You know, I learned a little magic trick to this, get rid of the garnish. I think this is a dad joke. No, no, it's not. You ready? Yes. All right. One. Two, three. I know what's gonna happen. I hate it so much. What? It disappeared. It's right here. <laughs> no, it's right here. Whoa. That's really good. What? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, dude! <laughs> so dumb. It's so dumb. I hate it. <laughs> and then you look down. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I well, usually put it in your pocket, but I didn't want to stuff it in my pocket. Oh, nice. Okay, so. Still tastes like whiskey, which I love. Yes. Yeah, that big cube of ice. It chills it off, but it doesn't water it down. Yeah, all the sweetness does too is tamp down the tannins mm -hmm. of the oak and the whiskey. Yeah. It does, it's not super sugary. Mm -hmm. It probably would be when you get to the bottom of it. 
It is sweet though. I mean, bourbon's already sweet. Mm -hmm. The Maraschino cherry is sweet. The muddled sugar is sweet. So with this version, you really need to be buckled in for a sweet cocktail. But on a hot day, which is kind of the point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so here's what I'm good setting baseline. for me. This is a good baseline because I taste all the things he put in there. Mm -hmm. Orange, cherry, sugar. Yeah. And the whiskey is just sort of softened around the edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get the ingredients. Right. The layers are there. So let's start with the number one. Let's uh, let's put in our order call. You ready? Yeah. Richard! Does this count as like a abusive work environment? I think so, yeah. You drink? Ah! There you go. <laughs> now, now, now I feel okay. Yeah, yeah, he yelled back. As it's long a, as they yell back. It's, it's all fine. fair game, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay, so. so we don't know. Thank you, sir. Number we do. One. We don't know what we're drinking, but we're gonna give notes. It's an old fashioned. <sighs> oh, more whiskey. But at the same time, it feels like it's a lower proof. Yeah, more mild. Oh, ours is cask strength. Yeah, this we more just whiskey. made a cask strength cocktail. Yeah, but there was more flavor to this. Well, I think I more th whiskey flavor. You think? Yeah, go okay. back. It's a. It's got a rounder middle. See, I get more oakiness in the cast strength thing we did originally with her. Yeah, but there's a roundness to the middle that ours didn't have, it was thinner. This is not as thin to me. Okay. I, it's hard to describe, but I, I agree with both of those things. Okay, All so. Right. Richard! The crutch, so, the crutch of a new. An eagle flies into the sun, and it has a six foot wingspan. Or into the sun has a three foot wingspan. When it flies away from the sun, it has a six foot wingspan. You know why? Because when it flies into the sun, <laughs> when it flies into the sun, it can't see. <laughs> Numero. <All right. laughs> Thank you, Go. sir. Oh. This is totally different. Okay, yeah. This is, uh, you know, whenever you're making cocktails. Herbal. There's, there's a question as to whether or not, does the whiskey choice make that much of a difference? Yeah. By the time you add in all the layers, I think it depends on the cocktail. With an old fashioned, most of the time, the whiskey choice is a pretty important choice. You're not gonna be able to hide that basic whiskey uh, with just, you know, the handful of flavors that are in there. That is herbal, almost ginger, like a exotic cola. I'm gonna say maybe this is rye. That, I don't know, man. That but herbal? It's, I don't, I don't know. know that it is a rye, but it's delicious. There's the, yeah, that herbal and there's a little bit I of like spiciness. I like that one way better. Richard! So, you know what you call a polar bear? In, Are you uh, really doing this In the me? Sahara Desert? Lost. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you, You're welcome. Man. You saved Daniel's life just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that feels like a return to one. It's a little oh. bit more of a sweet tea and a honey mm -hmm. on the nose for me. Oh, that's just vanished. More so than any other so far, the whiskey took a back seat to the sugar yeah. and you know the uh, the cherry. Yeah, I agree. Oh. Eh, that's an easy like, eh, let's move on. It's the lightest. It's by, by far the lightest. But it's also the most invisible if you're looking for that whiskey note. Yeah. Richard! So this episode is sponsored by Helix in this very awkward situation. With my marriage, there has been this loaded, unspoken issue because a few months ago, I think it was about two months ago, we bought a very, very expensive, several thousand dollar bed. We got Helix as a sponsor. So I'm gonna call my wife and we'll see if we can get us to admit to each other that we like this. Call Brandy. Yes, what's up? Uh, the Helix bed? Uh-huh. I think I like it better. So what are you saying? I think you like it better too. <laughs> I do like the Helix better, but only if we can return the other one and get our money back. So I think that I should just sleep upstairs and the more expensive bed would be more comfortable for you because then you just have more room. I think you were on crack and a half. <laughs> Uh, you figure all this out. You figure it out, and then let's get us a big old Cali King Helix bed. Okay, love you, bye. Bye, uh, you suck. <laughs> you are on crack and a half. <laughs> Just like whiskey, a lot of this comes down to personal preference. There's no one perfect mattress for everybody. Fortunately, Helix has this really helpful sleep quiz to help you narrow down which is gonna be the right one for you. 
it ended up pairing me with the Helix Sunset Lux. And the specific reasons why I like it better is it's incredibly soft. It's actually made for side sleepers like myself. Has a breathable top so you don't get too hot at night. This was originally for our guest room, but we're going to be getting at least one more at a bigger size. But one of the best things is they deliver it to your door for free. And it comes rolled up in a really surprisingly small box. You open it up with a 100 night sleep trial. And if you don't love it, they will pick it up for you and you get a full refund. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. You can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash whiskey and get up to $200 off your Helix mattress. Do you know that I've started doing lunges in my workout sessions? It yeah. helps me take a big step forward. <laughs> you right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Wow. He got you with that one. I mean, it's, it's just, it's so dumb. Oh. Well. Oh, this is, how is this different? It is this, different, but again, how? Again, this is leaning in the herbal direction for me. Yeah, similar, but there's. Similar to the number two, the second Strangely, one. a melon note in there for me. Yeah, a little, little bit of honeydew. Oh yeah, that's just sweet and melon heavy. It's I, interestingly the most candied version of these that we've tried. Can y'all just don't move for a second? Alex wants us to not move. Can I move now? Oh, <laughs> oh that's so sweet. I like that one even less than three. I, I, I like melons. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> to just cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you are right. I think for whatever reason, the sugar in this, mm -hmm. it seemed to accelerate. It became oh, yeah. a too heavy handed, too sweet. By far the sweetest of all of these to yeah. date. Richard! <laughs> oh, Jesus, he already knew. Oh, hey, geez. you know how you find uh, Will Smith in the snow? You look for fresh prints. I mean, the channel had a good run. <laughs> I think we did respectable. <laughs> hey, what the oh, hell? hey, this is uh, Woody. Because of the melons. <laughs> Why did that catch me off guard? <clears throat> yeah, so there's more oakiness. Ooh. I think maybe it beat out two for me. Richard! Can you want oh, to? Oh, oh! Oh, wait, what was that? Cinnamon. This is the most cinnamon of all of them. Yeah, you're kind of right. Yeah. Yeah. How did that happen? It's definitely cinnamon. Oh, it's really mild. It's uh, uh, so cinnamon nose. Yes. Invisible palate. I'm not gonna say invisible. I'll say there's quite a bit there, but what's there isn't very whiskey-ish. Yeah. It's more of the sugar. It's definitely flavor. And more of the cinnamon. And the whiskey kind of takes a back seat. Oh, He's talking. Let's call the distillery. Did they turn the phone off? They might have turned the phone off. They turned the phone off? Or Emma took it back by the still because when the bartenders aren't here. Are you coming? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Thank right, you, sir. We go. We go. Welcome. Thank you, sir. <laughs> by the way, you know what you call a factory that makes only mediocre products? Satisfactory. <laughs> This is the most orange citrus. Hmm, you're getting orange citrus. <laughs> I got all my notes. <laughs> Ow! This is so middle of the road for me on the nose. But on the palate, it's cinnamon vanilla cream. I get cinnamon citrus. I could see that too. Eh, unremarkable. I still have a, an obvious standout. Richard! All alone. I know. All alone. I, I've turned a corner. I've decided to be respectful, considerate. Hurry, tell us a joke. Mild hurry, mannered. Hurry, hurry. Too late. Richard's right here. No, I had a good one, but no, Rex distracted well, me. We have Richard, so we don't need that. I, I wrote some of them down. That would be rude for you to talk Every nickname over nickname Richard. Is Richard is a joke. That's true. You know my favorite thing about Switzerland is it's hard to pick, but <laughs> <laughs> the flag is a big plus. <laughs> You like that? Oh, 
Oh, hey, that's different. That's, uh, this is antique. Mm hmm. That antique note you always talk about. Yeah, yeah, like the antique, uh, antique store, that yeah. old wood. It's been sitting around wood furniture for a long, long time. Mm hmm. It's, oh, oh. It's nice that it comes through on a cocktail. Take a sip. Oh, it does. And again, it's that same antique wood. Yeah. Note. Damn, that's good. And then the cherry and the sugar shows up too, right alongside. Yeah. It. Okay, what was your least favorite? Because I've got one. Four. Oh, mine was three. I did not like four. Four was my number seven. Bullet rye, bring it over here. The so, one, like, use rye instead of bourbon was your least favorite. I'm not feeling this. Yeah, that was my seven. It was just raw melon and candy and okay. sugar. Okay, so I know why people get it, but <clears throat> when it comes to this specific recipe for an old-fashioned, this was not, not anywhere close to my favorite. What was your seven? Because I think it might be my eight. So my number seven was three. No, it's not. Wow. Oh, no, it is. Yeah, that's my eight. So, you're, so we just reversed our la least two favorite. Yeah, okay. So and it's the other rye. The Rittenhouse. Yeah, oh. there are only two ryes, I think, in this. Really? And we bottomed them out on this drink. All right, <laughs> what's your number six? It was the, the number one. Oh, that was my So four. my sixth most favorite was the one that was marked one. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, Evan Williams, Bottle and Bond. I'm not really feeling it. That was four for me. I actually kind of liked that You liked one. it? So it's like middle of the road. Soft, mild. And for this price point, okay, fine. I You're going to put it in cocktails, whatever. My so. six was six, which turns out to be Buffalo Trace. Oh, you didn't like the buffalo? I didn't like the buffalo not in trace the cocktail. that much. Yeah, it was just mostly cinnamon. This is the one we both agreed was heavy cinnamon. Okay, all right. What was your number five? It's it's six. Yeah. Yeah. So. See, it's Buffalo Trace. <laughs> we keep putting them right next to each mm -hmm. other. Yeah, Buffalo Trace, it was the... Cinnamon heavy. What was your four? It was... Oh, yeah, wild it's wild one. turkey. So, we will reveal like all of the voting that people did. Yeah. But for me, this came in at uh, number four. That was my five. That was your five? Yeah. So a four and five? Yeah, again, right yeah, next to yeah. once again, we swapped them just close enough. Okay. So what was your third favorite? Eight. That was my favorite. Oh, that was your favorite? Yeah. Oh. Straight up, that oh. was my favorite. Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark, okay. Yeah. Wait, this was your favorite. That was my favorite. Your favorite, your number one. I don't know why. Just this was. was number three for me. Yeah. Very respectable. Yeah. Okay. What was your uh, number two? Two? Your number two is number two? I get, I yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. And that was my third favorite. So, your Woodford number three. Reserve. Woodford Reserve. Yeah, it's way up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, my favorite favorite. Yeah. You already said it was. Yeah, the... my, mine's Makers. I'm just going to keep my favorite right so, here. Makers with the old fashioned for you. Yeah. For me, what the hell is that? <laughs> Four roses, Four single roses, barrel. Single barrel, higher Bar proof. Yeah, barrel strength, good higher proof. This is 60.7% alcohol. Yeah. Whole. In terms of the, what the Magnificent Bastards voted on as their top choices, what mm. are they most often putting into the cocktails? This started from the number eight. I, so, I believe that was the Woodford. I've got it. Was Four Roses Single Barrel. Yeah. Was number seven on the list. Wait, what? For them. Seven. Seven? Seven. Oh. That's your first. Oh. They obviously weren't doing taste comparisons. Uh, their next one was Rittenhouse, which we did, the rye, which we were really bottomed out. Yeah, you're talking about you're going to seven, yeah, six, seven. seven. Their okay. sixth favorite was uh, Evan Williams Bottled and Bond. Okay. Their uh, fourth favorite was Bullet Rye, mm. which made it way up the list. For us, it was way down the list. Yeah, Maker's Mark was their third favorite. Okay. Also, so, so you, it was yeah. pretty close up. Yeah. And then Buffalo Trace was number two. Okay. Wild Turkey 101 was the crowd favorite. Yeah, because. Which, Which, let's just assume at this point that it's going to be Wild Turkey 101. <laughs> yeah, it's just always Wild Turkey 101. I think I like 101 better than a neat pour. Mm. And I get why people enjoy it because it's a bang for your buck whiskey. You know about but the skeleton that went into a bar? He said, hey, give me a drink. Richard! And a mop. I, oh. <laughs> You know, I've been thinking. So many dad jokes coming at me from every direction. Maybe I'm the one who's crazy. Maybe they are good humor. Going through and reading the comments, and I took it with the spirit intended. Constructive criticism. Nothing angry or cynical about it. You're a fine channel when you try, but it seems that you're more interested in lowbrow comedy than whiskey. Just think how many more subs you could have if you lost the camp. Maybe he's right. 
Maybe it's high time we take whiskey more seriously. After all, in a country whose mass media has gaslit millions of people into hating each other, and our biggest corporations have monopolized every corner of the marketplace. What could be more American than maximizing the numbers? You don't believe this was actually supposed to be fun, do you? I've been thinking, Daniel. Maybe shallow dad jokes all are the most patriotic forms of humor. One last chance, Daniel. Will you relent? And never say another dad joke for as long as you live. Well, it depends. Do you know why they, uh, seagulls fly by the sea? Because if they flew by the bay, they'd be bagels. <laughs> Fair enough. One last question, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Why aren't there any knock-knock jokes about America? I don't know. John? Straight man! Yeah. He's straight! He's <laughs> survived that because freedom rings does the punchline to that <laughs> <laughs>